Hello and welcome to Chapter 4, uh, Lesson 1. You'll notice that this actually is working with tweens again, except in this case we have a lot more modifications where the tweens are concerned. Um, I have already loaded up FL4 underscore 1. You'll see that at the top. And I'm starting on Flash 4-7. So what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to make sure I'm on keyframe 1. And I uh, move my playhead to keyframe 1. I then want to go ahead and I want to click on my object itself. And I want to insert, well, I'm removing the tween because I already put one in, my motion tween. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then take my playhead, I move it to roughly 25, and then I'll grab this and I will move it out. That then gives me a motion between between the two. And then I want to take my timeline, drag it, and move it out to 40. Now you'll note what that's done is it's actually extended the motion between all the way out to 40 because that was in the keyframe at the very end. And I can use, as we've talked before, the comma key will move you backwards and the period key will move you forwards. Now I want to then click on frame 1. Now I am on flash 4-8, and if I take my mouse pointer to the motion path itself, you'll note that that motion path, if I take it over this, we've kind of dealt with this before, I've got my square there below my icon, and if I click on it, I have this arc below it. And what that allows me to do is that allows me to change the actual path of the motion path. And then I want to choose the subsection tool. Now we haven't dealt a lot with the subsection tool, but the idea behind that is, is that allows you to change individual portions of it. So I'm working on flash 4-9, uh, number 6. And now if I take my mouse pointer right up here to this section, you'll actually have these arcs that will appear. If I take that arc and I grab it here, and then I want to drag it as it appears on flash 4-9, figure 9, and if I grab it and I move it up here, you'll notice I can actually change the path in more of a wavy fashion. And now if I run it, it kind of goes back and forth along those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and stay on frame 1. Now, I want to play the movie, we've done that, and I want to make sure that I'm on frame 1, which is absolutely true, and then I want to click on the properties um, panel and I'm on flash 4-10. Now what's important about the properties panel and I've had a few students do this, if you don't have the correct object selected here the properties of that object will not display. So these panels relate to what you have clicked over here. So in my case we're going to change it says display the properties panel which we've done. We've done. Point to the ease value when the pointer changed to a hand or double arrow dragged 100. So here's my ease and I could drag it if I want to or I'm just going to type it in. So here's my 100. All right, so now if I do this, you'll notice it slows down towards the end. And that's what our ease is doing. Our ease is getting it to easily slow down. Now, if I go back the other direction and I start on number 1 and I type in negative 100 and then I run it, now watch what happens when I run it. It starts off slow and then it ends quickly starts off slow, ends quickly. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to go back to my frame 1 and I'm going to change it back to 0. And so now it should be totally normal. It's just a normal car. No big deal. Um, verify frame 1 is selected, which we've done. Well, okay. Which we've now done. And I'm going to make sure to click the car. And a lot of these instructions when it says make sure to click the car, the reason you're doing that is because that's the object you want to interfere with or excuse me, interface width. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the width because this is, now you'll notice if I click off of this, I don't have that right here. If I click on this, I do have the width. So now we're going to change that to 80. So now my width is 80, I get a bigger car. Click the car, then play the movie, right? Click frame 40 on layer 1, then click the car. I can click the, so here's our click our car right there. So here's our flame 40, flame 40, frame 40. And I want to change the, the width value to 30 now. So our width value is, oh, that's our path, sorry. So I make sure this is selected, follow my own instructions. I go to width, I change it to 30. And you'll notice that, um, you'll notice now the car is much smaller. And if I rerun it, it starts out big. 
stop small. So I can play with the ease, I can play with the width, I can play with the actual size of these different things. If I wanted to, for instance, mine seems to have uh, shrunk just a little bit, and I can come along here, and I'm actually changing it so it's more all the way across. Now it says click on frame 20 on layer 1, so here's my frame 20. And then frame 20 on layer 1, I want to click my free transform tool. Once again, I'm making sure this is here, here, and I want my free transform tool. There's my free transform tool. And when I have this selected, now it's number 8, I want the rotate and skew option, which is this last one right down here. So I hit rotate and skew. And that gives me the options that it says on number 9, flash 411, point to the top middle handle. Then when the pointer changes to a double line, drag the pointer to the right skew the object as shown in figure 12. Basically, I'm taking my, after I've chosen the rotate and skew option, if I take my mouse pointer over that particular object, I drag it, and I make it go like that. And I think that's pretty cool. And what's going to happen now is if I play the movie, it's going to define, and then as it gets smaller, it kind of skews, so you're seeing it, uh, it's almost like it's, it's going so fast in the cartoons, it changes the size. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm on 4-12, and I'm going to create a color effect to it. I'm going to click the selection tool on frame 40, which I've done, and I'm going to have my car selected, so I make sure my car is selected. So here's my selection tool. I make sure my car is selected, and I'm looking for the color effect. Here's my color effect. And then I'm going to click my arrow, and I'm going to choose um, alpha. That's going to allow me to have the slider, and I can actually choose it to be 0%, meaning if I go from beginning to end now, it actually disappears as it gets smaller. Now, I want to reset the alpha to 100%, so we have a, a version to kind of look at it. And I want to color effect, and I want to ch click the advanced as it appears in number 11. So I want to do advanced. Now what we're going to do is we're specifically dealing with the advanced. Now what the before we just messed with the alpha that allowed us to see it or not see it, things along those lines. Now what we're going to do is we're going to specifically change the red part of the car itself. So our red portion of the car, so here I am in the red, and it says XR plus. So each one of those I can put 100, and that will allow me to change the red portion. Now you'll notice it's very, very, very red at that point in time. If I went and I changed this to 0, and I went into blue, it accentuates the blue because most colors are RGB for our red, green, a combination of red, green, and blue. So, we've done that, and now that takes us to flash 4-13. So we're going to play the movie. Mm, works perfectly fine. Now, we want to click frame 1 on layer 1, which is this frame 1, layer 1. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click the Orient to Path checkbox in the rotation area. So I make sure that once again I have this object selected, so the properties with rotation. And uh, do you see right here, we're going to choose, oops, excuse me, do you see the Orient to Path right there? So what's going to happen is this car will orient, orientate or orient to the path itself. See? Now it goes all funny as it goes. All right, so interesting enough. So we want to click the free transform tool on the tools panel and then click the rotate and skew option. And the idea is, is we are going to have the car pointing that direction. So we're going to click here. We've got our se selection tool. We make sure that's selected. And now we want to make sure we click our, let's see, our free, oh, pardon me, free transform tool. Once our free transform tool is selected, we should go down to the orient and school or rotate and skew, excuse me, and we want to then rotate this, so we have our circular arrow there, and we're rotating it in the direction of the path. And you'll notice now, it starts off one way, and then continues to move the other. All right. The car is orientated to the path, test the movie, and we're closing the flashback. Now, for your particular... Um, subject at the very beginning on page flash 4-7 it says save this as motion tw.fla so I would save this as file save as and then what I would do is I would put that in my 
network drive where I should have my animations. There we go. And I would call this motion, M-O-T-I-O-N, T-W, T-W, and then dot F-L-A. And once again, that will be on the assignment sheet for Chapter 4, so you want to make sure that you have this. All right, if you have any particular questions, uh, let me know. But that concludes the first lesson uh, from Chapter 4, specifically dealing with the car. And then we uh, pl start playing with the motorcycle as in uh, for uh, Flash 4-14, copying a motion path. So in the very beginning in Chapter 1, we are introducing, uh, we introduce these tweens. We introduce being able to move the circle and the square around. And now we're getting a little bit more advanced as we go through. Um, thank you very much for your time. Make sure you understand rotate and skew. Make sure you understand how to uh, orient the uh, picture to the motion path as well as changing the mo motion path in one way and the other where you're using the vector. Thank you.